I've got to stop. I have to stop doing the Donald Trump voice because it is actually starting to take me over. It is, it is cursed. It is a fetish. Like head, not, not like a porno fetish, like a fucking, like a dark thing that exists, a religious object that is insubstantial and lives inside of my skull. And I fucking feel him puppeting me like the goddamn Ratatouille rat every once in a while. I just came up with that off this spot, but it was not me. That was the voice. Rihanna Wu looks like what happens when you pee in the condom before putting it on. What the fuck, Donnie? What the fuck did you say that for? So I'm on a Brianna Wu kick. I am on a Brianna Wu kick, uh, which is fine for me. She probably already knows my name. I feel like she's a religious hound for stuff. I have not yet put Brianna face in thumbnail. I have not had that moment, although I'm sure it's coming. Um, and I, the more I am getting to know this individual, the less I want to have anything to do with progressive victory, which I know is not right for direct moral reasons, but for vibes reasons, it makes me want to fuck with progressive victory less that, which is crazy. Cause apparently I think Brianna Wu funded or is running progressive victory. Um, so like anybody that's giving the, that, that like organization side eye now, I kind of get it more, even though I've volunteered with progressive victory when it was, um, for the destiny event, the destiny thing made like if it was hit like destiny is like the guy all right destiny sneering kind of a douchey smug hyper lib fucking like literal lib cuck uh when i thought it was like when he when it felt like it was him running the shit i was like okay whatever it's fine but now that it's like brianna Wu, i'm very suspicious of it not because I feel like the people that are running it now and like doing shit in the day to day are like suspicious or something just because I know enough about disaffected, detached, rich assholes to know that they can turn on a dime and they will have a fucking martini one day and decide to wield their little God powers and fuck up everything on a whim and then just beg for forgiveness about it a few days later. And I will just say right now, Brianna Wu, absent of, well, I don't even have to say absent of evidence, but even absent of any additional evidence that other than what I'll be talking about today, even absent of that, I will say hearing her talk, hearing the way that she approaches communication, the way that she answers questions gives me such a sus vibe that I will say permanently, probably persona non grata in my mind. There is a sliminess to her that had it, it's it, it 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 transcends even slime it's almost like a gas i can i can see like i can i can see the particles of some thing burning out from or the flesh kind of deal i know this is like psychotic fucking like i am the uh, I, I am the one who sees i am the one who is kind of bullshit um but like she is very sus in her opinions and very weird. And I would just say, if you are going to be involved with progressive victory, do all of the best things that you can do. Anticipate because of the way that is, but this is also with any political org that is not, that is not over like 40 years old. Just anticipate and, and has that, that this one high level donor more than likely, if I understand how they're making their money, the one high level donor, high level operator in there could at any second jackknife, jackknife the bus off the side of a cliff. Just be aware. That's the vibe I get. Um, real powerful, like JK Rowling pre, uh, pre turf Island vibes. I'm not saying Brianna Wu is necessarily a turf. If she is, I would so stunningly be unsurprised by that uh, it, it would just kind of fit like a puzzle piece you know um and that's not just that that's literally not my pre some sort of pre-existing prejudice i don't really know her that well 
I was constantly, as I said before, getting her mixed up with Zoe Quinn because I was like, who the fuck is this other Gamergate person? Um, but she's she's got some strange things. We're doing this again. I, I did this last week, I recall, and now we're doing it again because yet again, like I, I'm very thrown by what in the fuck she's trying to communicate at all or why she feels confidence, which I think that's my thing. I think that's my tack that I'm going to take when I discuss Brianna Wu going forward is her confidence in herself needs to be shattered, obliterated, which is probably impossible because the rich can't feel pain the way that everyone else can or shame or humiliation or the fear of depredation that would keep you an uh, average citizen from going like, doing something that typically would be like too dumb to do. I don't think she, she, she suffers from the maladies of, of, of lack of funds. If you, if I, to hear it say fairly wealthy family. Yeah. That that's, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. And you know, it is what it is. It's not necessarily like she has absolutely done something that's so immoral. She should be kicked the fuck out of uh, all forms of interest or like uh, online existence and, and banned from fucking participation. In it. I just think her confidence needs to be shattered. Um, it is how, how it is. Like there needs to be a point where she can find no friendship in any of our circles. I don't mind if she wants to go and be friends with righties. I would enjoy that. I would actually, I, I would push her that direction because it doesn't like, not because like, I dislike her or even that I think her positions are necessarily right wing just because her entire existence feels like a hot potato that if you keep it in your area, it will eventually go off and fucking by hot potato. I mean a hot potato masher and blow you and your entire fucking org to shreds. That's the vibe that I'm getting. I, we, it's already known kind of explicitly that she's too cringe for the average normie. Like, her exist she's one of those people like uh from Gamergate, like Anita Sarkeesian and stuff, whose just natural disposition is so cringe that any fucking basic normie is gonna go, No, I don't like her. I, I, I just I can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, but I don't like this person. And if someone else wants to give me a hint as to why I shouldn't like them, I would be all ears and like a fucking righties just swarm into that area to say like feminism, ah! you know what I mean? Whereas the real reason is just a complete disassociation from me. General sociopath vibes is actually what you didn't like about that person. <laughs> Smarmy, smug, uh, self-absorbed pedagogy is, is what you probably didn't for the most part enjoy. Okay. So, uh, getting back to Brianna. Brianna, my favorite, my favorite lost daughter. Brianna's what happens when you piss in the condom before putting it on. I've got to stop. I have to stop the one, the Donald Trump voice, because it is actually starting to take me over. It is, it is cursed. It is a fetish. Like head, not, not like a porno fetish, like a fucking, like a dark thing that exists, a religious object that is insubstantial and lives inside of my skull. And I fucking feel him puppeting me like the goddamn Ratatouille rat every once in a while. I just came up with that off this spot, but it was not me. That was the voice. Rihanna Wu looks like what happens when you pee in the condom before putting it on. What the fuck, Donnie? What the fuck did you say that for? I get a little Donald puppet. <laughs> what are you talking about, blockhead? I'm the one running this show. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm the one doing it. It's me. I'm the cool guy. Oh, by the way, Surrey Fox Twisters is an epic movie. Yes, it is. Yes, it's very cool. Don't stop Trump voice, please. As though I would let him. <laughs> you all think I'm going to die. I'm going to go to a little baby box and go away. No, 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 my friends. I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm the guy. I'm going to be around for a while. I've become what they call a cognito hazard. I live in your brain. I'm going to creepy crawl. Have you ever played Gotham, Arkham City? It's going to be like when the Joker virus gets out. I don't know which one of those it is because I was busy running America while you losers are playing video games, playing lots of their mother's basement. I know all about it. Joker virus. It spread. I'm in you. I'm inside of all of you. Uh, 
Dude, if I sit down with the fucking orange spray tan on, blue suit, hair all fucking swooped back, that shit, you know, that's going to be wild. That's the true Joker makeup. I know I've seen, uh, I've seen, dude, okay, as far as the special goes, if you assholes give me the 10K, I, I have the same skin tone as fucking Donald Trump. I would look, if I just did only bronzer on my face and left my ears undone, I would be very close. Sit down here in a suit. Let me tell you, I, this is very cool. Very cool. I'll cover the election as Donald Trump. I'll do it. I don't, I don't care. Yes, I've lost a little weight. I've lost a little weight. It's a magic pill. It's called Ozempic. All right. You should tell your mom to take some because I'm sick of flipping her over after I'm done. She's very heavy. Very big woman. Hard to get off the bed. All right. She smells like a sandwich and feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's Baron Harkonnen and you're Aaliyah yeah he's a literal ob abomination abomination <laughs> standing, standing at 80 <laughs> oh my god Halloween stream it'll be the last time it's relevant or it'll be the beginning of a lot of Trump's Trump uh impersonations being relevant for a while okay so this is uh Brianna Wu um this is this is a strange this is a strange series of tweets okay um I will say I'll, I'll do it if I it's one of those I feel like if I think about it I will do it segment content warning War violence, all of that kind of stuff. We are going to be talking about some Israel-Palestine shit for a bit, a little bitty bit, all right? Doesn't mean the segment's not going to be fun, but if you see red, skip ahead. You guys can pop off for a little bit. Just go rewatch yesterday's stream. Come back when the red's gone. Uh, I'm going to be covering um, Hamas or fucking IDF. Apparently, uh, I, I'm only getting this actually from her, which is probably a bad idea in the fucking first place, but... I'm going to read through this. Apparently, uh, they finally destroyed Al Shifa Hospital. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Let's see. Hold on. Let me just read this fucking CNN. Do, 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 do. Why Israeli forces are raiding Al Shifa again from CNN. This is by Nadine Ibrahim, Sana Norhak, Kader Al Zaanun, and Abir Salman. Do, 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 do. Israeli forces last week launched another military operation on Gaza's largest hospital, Al Shifa, bringing the smalling medical, sprawling medical facility north of the enclave back into the spotlight. I don't know when it's left because the Al Shifa hospital is all we've been talking about for like six months. Uh, now it's an 11th day. The operation is the second of its kind at the hospital, which sits at the western part of the northern, northern Gaza city. The IDF first raided Al Shifa in November. An operation in which the facility's main building was heavily damaged and effectively ceased to function. The raid also comes despite the IDF in January claiming it had completed dismantling Hamas's command structure in northern Gaza. While the IDF said civilians, patients, and medical teams were evacuated during the operation, Palestinians inside Al Shifa and around it have reported civilian casualties and arrests, as well as a large scale destruction at the complex. Heavy fighting around the hospital has also been reported by Israel, Hamas, and civilians with the United Nations officials saying hospitals must not be battlegrounds. Here's what we know. Why are the Israeli forces raiding Al-Shifa again? Israeli forces began their most recent operation there on March 18th, saying they are conducting precise operational activities against terrorists located at Al-Shifa, a statement that also echoed in November's raid. The IDF had returned in force to Al-Shifa despite Israeli defense. Speaking of troops in a video, he said it was cool that they did it. Around Al Shifa, IDF said in an update Wednesday, approximately 200 terrorists have been eliminated in the area of the hospital since the beginning of the activity. IDF also claimed that terrorists fired at IDF troops from within and outside of the ER building at Al Shifa Hospital. CNN can't verify. For years, Israel has claimed that Hamas fighters are sheltering in mosques, hospitals, and other places to avoid Israeli attacks. Israeli officials have echoed the accusation since October 7th and following their first raid in November, escorted CNN into Gaza to see a newly exposed tunnel shaft discovered at the compound. Is this the fucking... Is that this stupid-ass video? The embarrassing one? There is absolutely no way. Oh, shit, look. This is... This is... Oh, is this a fucking... Is this a fucking Anna Kasparian commercial? Is this a fucking Anna Kasparian commercial? 
and how to use it. But what we weren't prepared for was what happened afterwards. The stress, oh. shocking threat of prison, and legal fees that spiraled out of control. Hold on. This Thankfully, we have USCCA memberships. Because we could afford justice, yeah, she's got a all gummy charges smile. against us were dropped. Join the USCCA. <laughs> Citizenship guarantees service. Can I do my Anna Kasparian right now? She just... What is it coming to in America where people can't just shoot intruders anymore? I know that I'm a member of the left, but I feel like I am being destroyed, drowned out, and unironically shank... Uh, shank? Shank? Um, treated misogynistically and uh, ground down into the dirt over my concerns that a random man in a hoodie is going to attack me in my home. <laughs> Why should anyone feel concerned for even an instant if they have to reach for a gun? What if there's a homeless wander wandering wildly about? I live in a homeowners association with a gated community, but somehow people still manage to surpass the gate. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep doing it. Oh my God. This USCC, I guess this is a, I guess this is a bad shoot insurance, which is crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wanted to watch the rest of this. Cause I want to see if it was that shitty ass uh, video we all watched. We go in to join this embed with the IDF. Goes out and it has another uh, corridor to this way. Towards the hospital. Towards concrete top. A metal door. They say they have not yet concrete meters from but Israel continues to us, but with international criticism mounting. God damn, man. There ain't shit. There ain't fucking shit left of it. What are you fucking, what are you jogging to? Israeli officials have blah, 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 evidence is not established without a doubt that there was a Hamas command center underneath the hospital as Israel had claimed. What are Palestinians saying? Some 3,000 people were sheltering in Al-Shifa at the time of the recent raid. The Ministry of Health in Gaza said, adding that those attempting to leave were being targeted by snipers and fire from helicopters. Hamas accused Israel of striking targets without regard to the patients or medical staff inside, a claim echoed by people at the complex. And of course, I'm going to get to this later tonight as well. But there were uh, fatal attacks on civilian, marked civilian aid workers in a very, very open, the most possibly the most open air area i've ever seen um for for top down shots uh, the israelis kind of in maybe actually in this case discriminately killed um a series of of uh or several aid workers in a series of attacks on aid worker vehicles that were it was just bam 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 and and just hit the aid worker vehicles again and again and again which is just a war crime that is that is a war crime crime war crime war crime war crime just straight up the inexcusable. Um, yeah, because uh, I'll get into that one here too, but we'll finish up this. So I will say without a doubt, the Palestinians are, even if they are the most vicious Hamas militants, the I'm afraid to go out from anywhere except for the hospital that basically is only sort of kind of not being bombed into nothingness or nothingness because it's the one place that everyone in America knows the name of. That's the only place. That's the only safe place that you've created in what is ostensibly a free fire kill zone. I get it. Like I, I get why you would just be like, yeah, man, I, I want to stay there. Do you know? Like if you push into those people outside, they're going to die. I don't even know how the fuck it, it's a roach motel. And once you hide there, if you try to leave, they fucking just kill you from what, from what the vibe seems to be. Al Shifa hospital is the only named building I've heard of in this entire fucking conflict. That's been mentioned in the West, at least where you can walk in and potentially not get killed by the IDF. I mean, I guess that's changed now, but for a while that was kind of the one place that you could go and not get your fucking head unzipped. So strange, strange. Yeah, they tore up nearly all the graveyards and burned the bodies looking for hostages. But yeah, they're basically using dozers to tamp down on their new land development. It's gross. I'm not surprised. It's very strange. It's very strange. It's not a war crime. If you tell the people saying it, they are anti-Semitic. Oh, it still is. If you call me anti-Semite, I, I really just don't, I don't fucking care. Because I'm not. <laughs> so.
and and unironically, I think this 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 conflict this year has probably is going to result unironically like the Israeli government's actions have basically annihilated the public distaste for the phrase anti-Semite. Like you could be called an anti-Semite on October 6th. Do you know what I mean? 2023. And it would be like, whoa, fuck. Like, wh why did you say that about me? Like, should we have a conversation about this? And now it became such a integral part of the, like, I need to make you feel guilty so that I can fucking blow apart fucking brown kids, like propaganda cycle that I just don't even give a shit about people being called. I don't, I don't know what do you, who, who's an anti-Semite other than like Kanye West. I mean, obviously, cause he just walks around saying he is, I take his word over anyone else's that's calling him an anti-Semite at this point, because the word has now fucking means nothing. Unironically because of the actions of the largest Hebrew speaking nation in, in maybe the history of the planet. I don't know. I don't know how big actual old school Israel was. Uh, Hamas accused Israel of striking targets without regard to the patients or medical staff inside, a claim echoed by people at the complex. Hundreds of those sheltering remained stranded inside the hospital for days with little food or water and warned by the Israeli military that they would be shot if they left the hospital without first receiving instructions to evacuate. I believe 100%. Um, I, I just believe that. Eyewitnesses say medical personnel and other civilians were detained by Israeli troops. Probably protective. If I had to guess... They probably did a protective custody. With, they probably sent in better teams overall to extract any semi-well-known or highly educated individuals who it would look really bad if they died. And they probably went in there and bagged them and pulled them out for a series of reasons. A, they can say, we put you in protective custody so that you wouldn't get hurt in the raid. And B... We're not going to let you go back to the hospital and you are the only uh, trauma surgeon that is qualified to work on like leg arteries, which just for any reason, I don't know that you would bring it up. It's just something that we don't need at that hospital right now. <sighs> Why is the IDF called the IDF and not the Israeli army? Is it a legal loophole? Um, people just call, each, call themselves whatever. Usually um, it's a branding thing. The American Department of Defense used to be the Department of War. And I think before that, at some point, it was called the War Department. Sometimes that shit can kind of go far. It's kind of like uh, if you don't put all of your soldiers in like um, black uniforms with shiny silver skulls with crossbones all over them and stuff, that you might be a little less. You might be. You might feel a little less inclined to do violence against people. Image can go a long way, and calling yourself a defensive force also when you're talking like as talking on the world stage probably goes a lot farther further to say like hey we are defending ourselves uh this is not an offensive action you know what i mean some of the militants were carrying guns inside the hospital well let's see he spoke on condition under of an of anonymity for fear of reprisals estimated about 400 to 500 hamas and islamic jihad members and their families and their families arrived at the hospital in mid-March. Some of them appeared to be members of Hamas's political branch, while others were armed militants. Okay. What is that? What does that justify? I, what, what do you, okay, that's fine. Because, um, let me tell you. This is going to throw, this is going to throw everyone for a bit of a loop. Hamas are human beings. They, like, replicate. They have kids. They have families. Sorry. Um, some of them are, yeah, they act like animals, but, uh, we all do, we all do. And they actually live in this area. They, they're from there. <laughs> That's why they have Hamas. Uh, Hamas live in this place. More than likely their addresses and shit have already been figured out by somebody and whatever they were living in was turned into a gigantic puffy pile of dust. If I had to guess, if I was a Hamas militant, um, and I had to walk through uh, a kill zone that was set up for me, but still had to take care of my fucking family, who the IDF more than likely know, and uh, who knows how they'll treat them. I would probably carry a gun with me. Uh, these are reasonable things. These are reasonable things to do. Uh, yeah, are they terrorists? Probably. Probably. Uh, do the specific guys that are armed more than likely deserve to get cracked? And would they be legitimate targets? 
sure-ish um, in, in, a, in a legitimate interaction. But like, these are also, and this is the reason, like th there's a lot of people that are in Hamas now that weren't in Hamas in October. October 6th, Hamas recruitment and October 8th, Hamas recruitment, totally different fucking ball games. All right. And fucking January 20th, I don't know, that's not a specific date, but post fucking 2024 Hamas recruitment, whole different fucking ball game, whole different reasons for fucking joining. Hamas probably has some resources. They have access to their little terrorist tunnels. Maybe that's a thing that, that, that it, that's traded over there. I don't know. You can't know anything about this fucking zone. It's full of lies. Everyone's always fucking trying to get on a grift about this. But one thing I can tell you is that human beings are human and humans act the way that humans do. Let's just go over facts we know for certain. Hamas lives in fucking Gaza. <laughs> they, they, live, they live there. They bought groceries there. They cooked their fucking dinners and breakfast there. That is their home. The reason they exist is because of this conflict. They live there. The families that they have live there. Generations of them. They're actual children and shit. This is going to blow your mind, but terrorists actually have lives outside of terrorism. Some of them really do. Uh, people that are the worst absolute people, yeah, obviously, they'll be whatever. But like, this is an important part of counterinsurgency. Like, You need to understand this, because if you're just being a reactionary, you'd be like, well, they can get exterminated, their fucking families can get exterminated. It feels good. feels good to say. You're like, man, I'm fucking, I'm heated up. I'm upset he's spaghetti. But, and this is the very big, but what are you going to accomplish with, do you know what I mean? Like attacking these people. Like what are, what, what, what are, if, if you just like destroy them, knowing that people have families and that you could like use their family safety in order to probably barter their surrender at times is a whole different thing that there were Hamas militants inside this facility and their families were inside with them does not scream to me hey, uh, we're going to do a coordinated, well-thought-out attack on Israel. It suggests uh, the death zone has limited the pools of safety to basically this and maybe a few scattered other places, which all are just boiled down to holes in the fucking ground, and we want to fucking like hide here because we don't want to die. Um, which all doctors, by the way, real doctors will say, yeah, you can hide here. Don't fucking hurt anybody. Because you're in here not shooting anyone. Let's just add that. Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe they threatened some people. I don't know. But what I do know is it, it, the IDF forces did go into the hospital. And the IDF forces did engage in combat in a hospital. Which is so fucking unnecessary. It is actually crazy. Because you can do this thing. I swear it's fucking crazy. It'll blow your mind. There is an ancient military tactic called a siege where you surround things and you don't let anybody out and you order surrenders of them. <laughs> and you just don't kill everyone that's inside. You can just siege a building. It's just a, an operational thing that you have. You have to not constantly fucking burn the place down. Uh, the entirety of Gaza has been under siege for, for fucking forever, obviously. Um, but it's just... It just speaks to the incompetence and the kind of lack of concern the IDF seem to have for any operating under any fucking standards that are typical for every military force I've ever heard of in the modern fucking era. Like, it's wild. Like, what, what did you think you're going to accomplish by going into a hospital that is one of the few operation, operating hospitals in the area? What, what, what was the value of the attack? Are you just, like, literally out for blood? Like, what, why is IDF not saying specifically, like, it should be, we should be leading. You should be leading before I get to fucking witness statements. We hit Al-Shifa Hospital specifically to take fucking uh, Abu Bakr fucking Ibn Dishka. Like, whatever the fuck. That's a funny joke. I just said a funny fucking joke if you know enough <laughs> Arabic. Abu Ghabba. <laughs> you gotta go find Abu Ghabba, um somewhere and ferret them out of there. You know, I, we're, we're going to go arrest this one person and, and force a surrender or something, but that's not really, that's, that's not the vibe here. And if that was even the intent and you didn't succeed, that was a highly risky, unnecessarily risky maneuver to pull off. 
and yet another international embarrassment. Yet another international embarrassment um, on top of uh, several. And I really feel like it has to be kind of hammered home to the IDF soldiers over this. Like, if you're in the IDF, like, this is fucking embarrassing for you guys. Just as a person that was in the military on my own account. Not the coolest dude ever. I'm not like a fucking war hero or anything. But you guys are humiliating yourselves, like, left and right. And yes, I am talking about, like, you and your dead friends and all you went through, all this shit. Don't worry. I did too. I'm talking to you man to man as like a guy who's been there, done that. Y'all are fucking embarrassing yourself and you are making sacrifices and sacrificing other people for gains that have no military merit that is obvious at all. There's just no sense to any of the shit that you guys are doing. You are just engaged in slaughter. I think for the sake of it, I literally cannot boil it down to any sensible objective after this. Because even if you take Gaza, you still have everybody else. You guys are going to be fucking terrorized forever. Like, I I know, if not everybody that's in the world knows, that, like, fucking Israel's not made out of fucking steel on all sides. You know what I mean? Like, people are still going to be sneaking into your cafes and your boat, your, your bus stations for generations because of this. You guys are going to suffer terror attacks for generations because of how much fucking hatred you're building up against yourselves. And, like, bro, you're going to, to a degree, have some of it fucking coming. Because, I mean, like, if some five-year-old's core memory is of, like, watching uh, his doctor father be gunned the fuck down in a hospital, and, like, that kid survives, what, you know what kind of fucking positive journey he's going to have to go on to kind of let that shit slide? Do you know what I mean? And... If your response to me saying that immediately is, well, you should just kill the five-year-old so the child of your enemy can seek vengeance, you deserve to get got. You're just as bad as whatever you think you're fighting at. And, and, and I don't care if both of you drown in the pool of blood that you're filling day by day with your ignominious and disgraceful deeds. Like, I just don't give a fuck. What is the military goal? Like, what is the violence going to get you is the point of any military any military operation and i cannot boil down any of this to anything other than mass slaughter of indiscriminate slaughter of civilians and hamas in order to thin the numbers to the point where you maybe believe you will pass a reproduction point and maybe get past the like vengeance of the the next generation or something like it is, it's a, it's a biblical level of a fucking war crime, um, of war crimes, just incessant over and over and over again. See allegations of torture and abuse, more traumatic accounts have since emerged from people who recently escaped Al Shifa or are still trapped there. A Palestinian paramedic who was detained by the Israeli military for three days at Al Shifa claims he was stripped naked and left outside in the cold An assertion made by other men who have been released from the area. He says he was also beaten and prevented from using the bathroom. This is typical. This, uh, this absolutely happened. I will tell you why this happened. This is, and this is a callous, this is just callous, me just trying to describe military operations to you. If you have it set up where you start taking prisoners, right? The IDF, never forget, this, this is the one thing I have learned. The IDF is wildly fucking incompetent. They are stupid. They are led by stupid people. If you're the like, general, all of your fucking field grade officers, you should just march them into the sea and tell them to breathe water until your military's IQ pops back up into the triple digits again. If you do an operation where you have to take civilian detainees, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. You have to take civilian detainees because you have to organize the people inside of a building. Now you are attacking a hospital, which I've seen before. I think it's like six or seven stories. Maybe it's bigger. It seems very large. I saw pictures of it before. If the, on their side, four to 500 militants and their families the fu that is just a psychotic amount of people to, to to wrangle all right so you're you're thinking think of it like this i want you guys to imagine in your head a medium-sized local show like a concert for like an older band that you have like your downtown place that's not like the the convention center that's going to be three to five hundred people inside that that establishment right like a big bar a big bar with a stage you have to go into that bar, separate the non-combatants from the combatants, I guess, bullet by bullet, 
in their mind, floor by floor through the entirety of this thing. That is first off a psychotic, psychotic end goal. That's just so difficult to do. That is just so difficult to do because if you don't have a lot of intelligence, if you don't have a lot of fucking planning, preparation, and a lot of really stone cold, dead eyed, like operators, like guys that are like, I am ready for whatever comes. I am, I cannot be shaken. I cannot be stirred. I am a fucking glassless martini. I am fucking ready to rock and roll. If you don't have people that are that hardcore, you are taking civilian casualties. Just, you are going to shoot civilians because you get scared. You're walking, you have to go to a house. Imagine, walk upstairs in kit. Just walk upstairs in kit. One time. If you want to replicate this, put a 35 pound weight in a backpack, jog up one flight of stairs. All right, now you got to do it all up all seven. And now run back and forth into every fucking door all the way through an area that is cluttered with actual injured people. Uh, who, whatever the fuck, who knows? Because you're not getting any fucking intel because everyone in that building hates you or is terrified of you. And you've got to clear that. Stay calm. Be healthy. Uh, stay hydrated and shit. And still be able to clip the few people that you're supposed to legally be able to clip and not hurt anybody else. That includes individuals who are going to have their heads wrapped up in gauze, people that are going to be under sheets because they're fucking dead or because they need to be under sheets because they have severe burns. You're going to have to be invading burn wards, ERs. You're going to have to go into oxygen-rich environments with a fucking gun. You are going to have to break every rule that has ever been established outside of the air gas facility. And I will just tell you right now, any air gas operator who is thinking about like, oh, I have to move fucking oxygen past these people will tell you like, oh, okay, yeah, that's actually psychotic that somebody's going to fucking fire a gun on the same fucking block, on the same block as the oxygen, the, 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 the pure oxygen container, which are all over hospitals, all over hospitals, oxygen containers and worse. Um, you've got to go in there and now you've got to start separating civilians that you detain from other people. I don't know how you classify this. This is the most complicated military operation I have because it's needlessly because it's badly organized. This is already one of the most complicated military operations I've ever seen just starting to write it out on paper. You are going to have to classify who can and can't be moved. You're going to have to identify in the heat of combat, inside a building, dudes that you maybe recognize based on their face who could be wearing masks and may not have guns. They might have just put their guns down and they want to walk outside. Uh, so you're going to have to separate all of them, women, children, injured, uninjured. You're going to have to dead check every corpse in a hospital in a major military fucking uh, theater of war that has been killing the fuck out of what... 4 million, 10 million, 4, 10, 10 people a day. If it was 10 people a day within three blocks of the hospital, that is such a high amount of fucking death for one hospital to be taken care of. So the morgue's full, rot, all this shit. Are you shutting down power to the building? Or are you going to keep power to the building on? How is the structure inside the building? It's been bombed a few times. What fucking, what fucking uh, escalator, or not escalators, what fucking elevators are working and can you stop them? Should you stop them for people using them to the fucking, are you interrupting major surgeries that are going on? Do, does every staircase still work? Do all of the hallways still have floors in them? What rooms still have walls that don't open up onto places that might be sniper corridors that they're waiting to shoot into? Such... Such a fucking uncontrollable area. You are now separating civilians in it. You're, you're picking people out. Okay. This is why I know this is true. You're stressed as fuck because you are an untrained, highly untalented fucking 19 year old moron who was dragged out here to do whatever the fuck knows shit for the fucking motherland. Okay. You now have to separate all the military aged males. This is how this goes. And because you can't tell who the fuck they are while they have their clothes on, you probably have little strip cards like this made out of plastic. They probably print it out one per fucking team or two per fucking like unit leader or something. He's going to give them to the guys who are designated on your detainee squad. 
You're taking dudes down into the detainee squad. Maybe they're bagged. Maybe they're not. They are probably had the shit kicked out of them because they talked back and got... So they're fucked up. Maybe some of them are literally half dead from already having been shot a couple days ago. I have You have no idea, and I'll just tell you it, that's what's going on. The only way to tell if they do or don't have identifying marks, weapons, communications devices, identification, what have you, and also that they don't run, is to strip them naked. It is not warm over there right now, if I understand correctly, and you're next to a body of water, so it's probably pretty fucking cold. These guys are now in a de detainee situation, which is the worst situation that you can be in. Inside the building, they probably have their fucking families still in there, or maybe people they know, or maybe just one of the guys is crying on the ground, all right? He's like, like probably fucking, like, I get, if I, if you, I have done detainee ops. It is fucking miserable, because the guys are not having a good day. A lot of them think that you're, they're about to get executed. In this case, they probably fucking may have been, who knows what the Israelis are up to at any given fucking time. Same with Hamas. Everybody's doing war crimes. You have to finish this entire fucking operation before these guys can leave. And who the fuck knows how long it's going to be? Are they hitting one floor, two floors, every floor, the top floor, floor five and floor one? How much uh, like restriction is going on? They're holding people inside the hospital, which is fucking great. Every person that is held has to have at least one or two guys, hopefully two dudes looking at that individual. And then you're probably looking at an upper limit of like 10 to 15. So if we do the math, like whatever, 500 ish divided by 15 plus whatever staff and dead people are already there do that math. And that's how many people you need just to watch the detainees and the injured and dead bodies. This is before you take a single fucking casualty. At which point you lose a body, one, that got shot, and at least two, to drag his ass the fuck out of there and give him some fucking medical uh, assistance. It is the worst, it's the worst fucking idea in the world. I, I don't know what it's going to give you, is the thing. Like, and it only gets more complicated. I would be stunned. I want to hear them talk me through this. Because this is this, this is the most psychotic Fuck, I don't know why you were doing it. Now, if it was, okay, we're going to go in and we're going to go into the top floor with a small team, tell everybody on a, on a, and in stairs, everyone that we run into stay in that building. And I know I can peel off, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? We, we go in, we have what? Two teams of 25, something like that. Two, two, two platoons. One platoon is just on fucking engaging the first floor we go into. Everyone stays there. And then, like, into another floor, maybe to hot strike a guy you know is there in that room, in that building, at that time. That is insanely complicated. And that is so much more simplistic than what I'm even talking about. Because who the fuck knows what kind of fucking IDF... If they are taking detainees outside, waiting detainees, these are, these are protected detainees. They're... For your own safety and for the safety of us, we have to hold you off to the side. They're a technology first attack force, you know, drone strikes, uh, drone strikes, helicopter hits, plane hits, artillery, the iron dome. Most of those things don't require a high level of technical skill comparable to the insane amount of training you need to have in so many different disciplines to hit, to do a hot hit basically on a building to like go and fucking like break into a building and shoot a guy and then leave without hurting anyone else, which is what you're supposed to do in war. If you're not just like a, a standard run a day criminal, it's madness. Surrey Fox, my one Twitch, my one Twitch TV commenter. I mean, it seems like the whole thing was ridiculous to begin with since travel exists. So if they were scared of vengeance, they now have potential people worldwide to watch for not just the people in a hospital. Yes. That, and that's the thing too is if you if they win it's the most pyrrhic 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 victory possible because like you can't blame anything on Gaza anymore now it's just you can't get along with your neighbors as just a standard world power so like are, are you going to start doing this shit to everybody because when you had Gaza to pick on it is what it is and there you know there's always roots to diplomacy and shit but like dude terror attacks against Jewish people worldwide are going to be at 
psychotically high levels, psychotically high levels for decades to come because of this. And it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's like a celebration or something. Like those are the people that the least deserve it, but the type of people that do terrorism, people like the IDF, they don't care um, about who the people that they're hurting are because they have some sort of vengeance in their heart that they're trying to fucking get over. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, there's Jewish people around the world are going to be targeted for extreme acts of violence for for decades, for decades after this, uh, because of these specific incidents, because of the acts of the IDF, and unironically to a, a, another extent because of the like inability of wealthy, spotlighted Western Jewish people to say that the IDF needs to cut it the fuck out and just have any idea of what's going on. It, it's the, it's the willful and indignant indifference to the suffering of the Gazan people and to the actions of the IDF, the like carte blanche support of the IDF is probably what I guarantee you the most militant Palestinian, like Hamas, whatever person that hears me talk about this would probably fucking like fight me on it. I mean, actually on the ground person. I don't give a fuck about your college friend. Whatever. They'll probably still be like, all right. Yeah. You're kind of an asshole for the way that you're describing it. But like, I feel like I'm taking a pretty, I'm trying to understand what the fuck is going on on the ground. Even though I'm like, I'm very anti Hamas. I, I, I think it's a terrible organization. I still think like we could meet kind of halfway on that, you know, like, discourse wise I, I would still fucking probably pop him if i had the the opportunity but with with these people that are up in hollywood and shit um you know like just getting the cameras on them and be like well i just support the idea of 100 percent. like that's crazy bad like just shut that it is it, it there's a slaughter happening and it's the indifference that you're showing now that is going to motivate the terrorist of tomorrow to be indifferent to the suffering of people that they blame for your indifference, which you're doing, you know, what's going to happen because you're doing this right now. You are being indifferent to their suffering. They are going to be indifferent to yours. Someone has to stop the cycle because I am talking of course, to rich people side by side. And this obviously it's not going to be the rich people who try to be the fucking bigger man. It is going to be, laid on the shoulders of the poor people of the working class to actually fucking have to like stop the cycle of violence, which is going to be so fucking bone deep inside of them. The, the need for and quest for and thirst for vengeance that it's probably a fucking motivating factor in how they pour the milk in their cereal in the morning. I know that they might not necessarily eat milk and cereal. Shut the fuck up. Uh, but I think you guys get the gist. This is a very big lead in a very big lead in to me still talking about Brianna Wu, by the way, it's a matter of arrogance. They've been teaching their kids that Palestinians are barely sapient for multiple generations, so their soldiers are arrogant and careless as if they're fighting NPCs. Yeah, I can see that. That's one thing. I don't know. Like, I hope you guys pick this up from me as well, uh, especially anybody that's like ever thinking about going into the military or doing military studies. Give your enemy, always give your enemy the benefit of the doubt that they are as intelligent as you and as soulful as you and as intent on their cause as you. Because the second you start actually, it's always fun to like talk, but this is serious Tyler. This is segment content warning Tyler. It is always fun to talk big shit and be like, you know what, hey, they're animals, blah, 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 blah. It's fun to do that, but in reality, in, in for reals, for reals, like if you don't understand your enemy, you'll never be able to take actions to mitigate what they're going to do. It's like, basically trying to sit down and play chess by instead of understanding how chess works, just cheating and trying to have more fucking pieces on the board than the other person does. You might kind of get far, but you will find yourself quickly put into a position where the rules of the game no longer make sense to you. You're the possibilities of forward movement don't make any sense. And the person that's across from you, might start fucking you sideways just because they understand how the game is played. And when they came to the table, they treated you with enough respect to know how you were going to, to work. Uh, this is going to go into why I think all leftists should read starship troopers. Unironically. I think that might be read it with a, read it with a insistent and um, soft, curious eye. 
Starship Troopers will open up the entire playbook for fascism for you. It will lay it out. It will show you every little possible thing that they think that they want. I, I have not, I, I, I can't spoil that. That conversation is going to be very, very long when I finally talk. I might have to do Starship Troopers as like a fucking video essay or something. I don't know because it's every time I start thinking about it, it gets bigger. But I guess. I can try to chat on both if you want to be overwhelmed with keeping up with both without the aggregator. I need to find one though. Also, wasn't there both threats of action from Iraq and a huge protest from Israeli civilians like a day or two after this? Really supporting the no one will take kindly to you aspect of the incompetent high command. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's, there, there's, there's usually, it kind of goes without saying that any flubbed military thing or any military thing that has kind of like a bad taste in the mouth after effect, it'll, they'll always have some sort of protest or like, you know, uprising kind of action. The mere existence of protest after the fact doesn't justify really anything. Sometimes it can be like fake. But in this case, I wouldn't be surprised if there was actually like serious outrage about this. So what would have been the solution to Israel's poor military expertise, sending forces around for support or proxy wars like the U.S. has been doing? Well, I'll tell you what, we're in tip top shape. We're in tippity tip top shape. Uh, the best thing to do is to stop doing war all the time, <laughs> but also to just train with, uh, to, you have to train with an eye on effective results really. And that they're on the ground. Soldiers might be perfectly competent. Um, this, this even happening at all strikes me as a high chain chain, high up the chain of command, uh, failing and it's at a certain point sometimes it will look like the foot soldiers on the ground are the incompetent ones when they're actually fully competent but the needs and desires of basically the legislators or or the powers that be over the top of and outside of the military chain of command what they are requesting of the military is such a patentedly absurd requirement or need or desire that it can't be met by any sensible way or any sensible metric and it will actually make the fucking military look bumbling and incompetent and foolish very similar vietnam for us is the same thing basically um american troops weren't perfectly competent there was a lot of conscription issues that inflated standard command Basic things that always will happen that are bad in war were way worse in Vietnam for America because of the sheer amount of conscripted forces that we had to push into the military, not just because of Vietnam, but because also we had a massive conscription for Korea that nobody ever fucking talks about just 10 to 15 years ish, depending on how you want to cut the timeline earlier. Um, and then, you know, 10 years before that for pushing eight or nine years, you had the draft for World War II. So there was a series of conscriptions that became increasingly, 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 increasingly unpopular uh, among the rank and file people because just getting drafted is distasteful in the first place. We don't really talk about it with World War II, but a lot of World War II people uh, did not want to be drafted and considered burning their own draft cards, going all the way back to World War I. So, you know, you're going to the end of a long line of high level conscription. You get into in, in Korea it was so crazy that they were fucking building whole new runways at um, UMCRD fucking Paris Island just to get people. It's called U-Line. It's still there uh, or A-Line. Um, it was a, an airfield so they could just fly you straight into there, I guess, maybe for training and straight out of there right to fucking Korea to fight, which is psychotic. Um, but it was a whole thing. What I was saying, what I was saying. But yeah, 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 yeah. But massive conscription forces can just really lead to a, a downgrading in morale. And morale is morale is the currency of good, effective military strategy. Because it's the one thing that you can quite literally see yourself expending and you can build it and you can decrease it. And conscription generally decreases morale. Having a motivated do or die volunteer recruit is worth having 10 sullen disaffected disingenuous i'm just doing this because i have to do it for two years conscripts 
Because that one kid is going to try his fucking goddamnedest to become whatever the fuck it is that he wants. Whereas the 10 fucking losers, maybe one or two of them will have some sort of like deep spiritual awakening. But a lot of them will just be like, you know, I'm doing my best. I don't care. You're, you're basically getting a McDonald's employee. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to do this and I hate it. Not to say like being a McDonald's employee is some horrible thing, but it's not like you go to McDonald's all the time and you're like stunned by the the sheer exuberance people have the esprit de corps of the, of the McDonald's fucking workstation. People are at best like, hi, I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with it. I'm the best on staff. And I'm just basically two inches away from blowing my fucking brains out in that freezer right there. But Hey, have a nice fucking day. You know, that's what you get with conscripts with fucking actual people that are in. It's a whole different story. And when you're in, you get put into fucking you I was in and by the time I got out I was like fuck the United States Marine Corps fuck everyone in my chain of command fuck George W. Bush kind of fuck Obama a little bit how about that fuck him too fuck everybody I fucking hate the United States military I kind of fucking I'm kind of pissed at the United States right now you get really disaffected just because the difficulty of the job is so fucking extreme being a volunteer you always have the moment where you're like well I did sign up for this. They can always use it. It can and will be used against you by your friends, by yourself against you, by your fucking uh, chain of command. Oh, did you not volunteer to be in this man's Marine Corps? Did you not volunteer to be here, son? Uh, I did. Well, then why the fuck are you complaining? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the kind of, that. that's the difference of the vibe. Okay, either way, there's still plenty of going on here. I'm going to get back because we have to finish up this thing and talk about uh, goofy ass Brianna Wu. Here's CNN reporting an eyewitness account that it corroborates exactly what WSJ is saying, which I don't, she, she's a subtweeting ass motherfucker, dude. There were about 400 to 500 members of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. They were the ones being fought, not civilians. They are the dead bodies you are seeing. That is not remotely what is written. Not remotely what is fucking written in this fucking shit that we just read. It's not at all. One witness said, one witness said there were four to 500 Hamas uh, and is Israeli jihad or fucking Islamic jihad people. I don't even know if uh, Hamas and Islamic jihad, I would have to get deep into the fucking op for set up there to see if those guys even fucking work together. Uh, Cause a lot of times they don't, but like that is completely different. One witness said that maybe, not, it doesn't seem like it was corroborated through a series of sources. And also it still just doesn't, it doesn't justify the fighting in the hospital. Like this is like, Brianna, you're fucking stupid for saying this. Like just, I know you're watching because you're a fucking Google Hawk. You're a fucking asshole for writing this and you're stupid and you should feel bad. Like you deserve to be attacked over these comments and I want to be the person that does it. I know you're supposed to be like, when you're my size, you're supposed to be reaching out and building bridges. I want to be building um, like little shitty uh, boats like Washington did when he crossed the Delaware. And um, I want to be setting fire to other people's encampments. Uh, and I want them to wake to my sword at their throat. Like I want that level of heat. And I think that's where I'm going to go with this. Like fuck Brianna Wu f for saying that. Like, are you like, you're, how fucking stupid are you? How fucking stupid are you to say this? Um, uh, not un unironically, and this kind of goes into the, like, the worst propagandists are supporting Israel right now, not just because it's wrong, but also because it's so, it's so fundamentally still a fucking war crime <laughs> to be, to turn a fucking hospital into unnecessarily turn a hospital into a free fire zone. That's just a controlled hospital, by the way, if Islamic state attacked a military hospital that had 500 armed Marines in it, that would still be a war crime on their part. If they went in there and started fucking fighting, like, do you understand? Like, okay, so what? I don't care. That's Hamas's hospital. Th fine. Like they're organizing attacks and shit from it. They don't have anywhere else to be. Just wait them out. Fucking maybe stop doing all of the other shit that's going on because it's not going to stop anything. And, um, like every other time where it's been like, well, they did, they did a great job. Like wh where's, where's the results. You just went and fought in a hospital that maybe 500 guys were in. Was it one of the fucking important people? 
let him have the hospital for a while. Literally turn down the heat on the conflict because it is getting you nowhere. Hamas was already in that area. And it's not a fucking like full blown terrorist terrorist organization, despite all of the shit that they've done. They still do consider themselves, from what I understand, to be to some degree a diplomatic entity who would be willing to pursue shit like a ceasefire. They have that ability, as opposed to certain other types of terrorist organizations, which are like Al Qaeda, which are strictly cellular and they can't be negotiated with because you can only talk to like three of them at a time because it's more like BLM where it's kind of like an idea out there. Tyler just compared BLM to fucking Al Qaeda. It's fucking dunked on. Uh, this is stupid. We have more of this somewhere here. What do people say? No human currently in bodies worked for the Bush administration more than you. <laughs> what a fucking champ. Fact check. This is crazy. Brianna Wu doing a fact check is psychotic, by the way. That's madness. Madhouse shit. Wild. Fantastical. Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad turned Al-Shifa Hospital into a command center. At this point, under international law, it became a valid military target. No, it didn't. And I'll tell you why it didn't. Cite the law. Cite the law. What law? What law? Isn't that strange? What do you mean under, under military international law, uh, it became a valid military target? Hospitals are not valid military targets. They're just not. They're just not. It's, it's in the law of land warfare. And it has to be highly fucking specific. And it's to the point where in all, my own ROE, I know this is crazy. I'm sorry, I got to lean back yet again on my fucking, I'm a combat veteran card. Not that it's a particularly fucking big deal or anything to me. But you can't just go and fuck. If somebody shoots at you from the tower of a mosque, you can shoot back at him. You cannot drop a 500 pound JDAM into the middle of the mosque, destroying the mosque, four surrounding buildings, and like anything else that's there. That's an indiscriminate and uh, non-proportional response to the conflict, which is there was no, re there's no proportional response to they're sitting in the hospital. They're just sitting in the hospital. That's not a proportional response. Like, it's an act of terrorism. Like I, the IDF just did an act of terrorism. If you're being shot at from the hospital, I would say that's legit. Like you're, they're just, they don't want you there and you're not supposed to be because you're in Gaza attacking them. So like, it feels like it's legitimate for them to not want you there. Cause you'll kill them. Like it's a combat, like go away. You could just argue that the fucking Gaza, the fucking Hamas, Where's the argument that Hamas wasn't protecting the Hamas the, of the fucking hospital from goddamn IDF? I, I have as much proof in both directions as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no evidence here of either thing being on. Like, we still have so many possible hypotheticals in the air because you have not deducted anything. It's one eyewitness says that of who knows how many people are in the hospital, by the way. I don't know why that's not being brought up, but just four to five hundred Hamas fighters and their families, a non-delineated number. So it's not four to 500 Hamas fighters. It's who knows what concentration of Hamas fighters with non-combatants because just coming out of the balls of a Hamas fighter does not, despite what I'm going to just assume the IDF teaches at this point, make you a legitimate target despite your age and lack of a gun training or desire to fight anyone because you're two. That is psychotic. It's an insane thing to say. Brianna Wu is pro-war crimes, unironically. Like, to the point where even if it, if it wasn't a war crime, you're so behind the mentality that leads to the wanton and unnecessary slaughter of innocents that you're no better than, like, the worst Hamas people. Like, they're making these same fucking arguments. And so, like, at that point, like... What, am I supposed to just pick you because you're the more likable one? Like, Brianna, don't fucking rely on that. Jesus Christ. Hospitals are protected because of their universal good on a battlefield. This is, once again, just justifying war crimes via working backwards to why the war crime is justified. 100%. Um, and there, this is no, there is no under international law. It became a valid military target because it's not because we don't treat ourselves that way. We don't say that American military hospitals are justifiable military targets. Um, we don't say that a British military hospital is a justified 
military target because it, that's fucking stupid. It doesn't matter if there's pillboxes on top of it. It's a protected asset and you just don't attack it. You just don't attack. You just don't get to attack hospitals. Lucky them. They have one spot that you can't fucking wipe off the map. Sorry. Maybe it's time to do something other than just relentlessly slaughter people for five fucking seconds. This is the point where you say you can siege a hospital. You can siege it. You can say you can't come in and out. You can dig up the ground around it. If someone shoots at you from a window, specifically, you can shoot back at that person in the window. You can't storm the hospital and risk the lives of every fucking man, woman, and child that's in there who are still receiving care because you fucking feel bad about a concert getting shot up. You just can't. Sorry. Oh, did that fucking hurt your feelings? Sorry. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Uh, your problems are not my problems. I'm talking about the callous and inhumane realities of warfare here. It's not about your fucking, like, feely feels. You just don't get to do evil because you feel justified. I, I, I feel like I'm simultaneously addressing, like, uh, real adult children and childish adults at the same time. Brianna, you stupid bitch. <laughs> I can only say it like that. Do you think that it's okay for a military force if they see a red cross on the side of a tent in a battle area, say it's full of literal nothing but combatants, red cross on the tent. There's guys there with guns protecting it. Do you think it's okay to firebomb that tent? Because yes, you do, you goofy fucking sl Ah, you horse-faced motherfucker. That is a war crime. You can't attack the military fucking tent that has the red cross on it. And you shouldn't even if you can because it's a fucking war crime. You're just arguing for literal war crimes. You dumb fucking horse-faced asshole. Like, I'm so pissed at you. <laughs> I fucking hate you so bad. Because, like, the callousness of this is beyond words like you're a fucking monster you're literally no better than the nazis that is why the nazis did nazi shit because people would come up with justifications like this and then they, there was just not a me that had enough fucking voice to say stop it you horse-faced fucking asshole you're committing genocide <laughs> that's it the, the reason that you don't have nazis everywhere is not because of people like brianna Wu. Brianna Wu supports the kind of people that become Nazis. She's fucking for it. She loves that shit. She fucking cracks one out to it every night before she goes to bed. People like me, quite literally, are the reason that there's not more Nazis. It is because I see people doing Nazi shit even when they're not Nazis. And I say, hey, bucko, knock it the fuck off. Because <laughs> if you don't, and I get within range of you, it's a different conversation. <laughs> God damn it. Tyler, isn't it also taboo to shoot a field medic? It's first off a crime. <laughs> it's, it's first off a crime. It's a crime. It is a crime. It is a crime to fire on anybody that has the red cross on them. If they go crazy and they're a combat medic and they start shooting at you, you can shoot back. But if they have a slung rifle even, a slung rifle and they are evacing dead. If you see a guy, you're not supposed to do the like, I'm an edgy sniper tactic. You're not supposed to do wounding killing. That, that is not okay. I can't remember if it's specifically illegal, but that is not okay. You shoot to kill. You shoot to kill because anything else is inhumane. You don't wound people in order to get their fucking buddies to come out and drag it. If somebody's evacuating somebody, you're not supposed to fucking fire on the person that's doing an evac because you wouldn't want someone to do that to you. That one dude is out. Let them take that guy out and then keep fighting the good fight. You know what I'm saying? To, 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 to stoop. The reason that Americans shouldn't do that and they shouldn't fucking gleefully engage in it is because we are Americans. First and foremost, when I say we're better than everyone else, I mean it. And you better fucking stand up for it. You better actually act better than fucking everybody else. And you better fucking embrace these kind of concepts because you're supposed to be morally superior if you want to fucking rule the goddamn world. <laughs> um, but yeah, you shouldn't be doing that shit. You shouldn't. You, sh you shouldn't do it because it's grimy. It's happened to our guys. It happened to our guys when we were in Iraq. 
And the closest that I've seen people get to doing some shit that they should not be doing uh, was when one of our fucking corpsmen got cracked because they were trying to help somebody, if I remember correctly. Uh, and there was a sniper operating in the area who was a sleazeball of a sniper. And they caught him is just basically how I'm going to end that statement. And that's the kind of shit you will degrade if you break those rules, if you break the gentleman's code. You know, we all have no real ultimate choice in being here. Things have happened that have made us act like animals, but we can still kind of fall to our best selves. You know what I mean? Like, I I know some of you guys like, like people like destiny or whatever and shit, you know? And like, it's kind of cute that he has like little fucking opinions and shit of this stuff, but like on a battlefield, like worthless, you know what I mean? You wouldn't want somebody that acts or talks or exists like that looking out for you. So why would you trust his disposition when it comes to stuff like this. Same with someone like Brianna Wu. Like, they're not the kind of people you would ever want to see fighting for something because there's no way they'd win, first off. Or even have the discipline to get into it. So, like, why would you trust their opinions on the fucking dogmatic, uh, on, on the, the, the dogmatism that fucking belies the, the rules of warfare and, like, the deeper philosophy and the fucking... The, the the human aspect of it like they're, they're just they're, they're kind of monsters after a certain fact like i i had a lot of respect for destiny in certain respects going into his like debate season on this shit but unironically he's kind of fucking unraveled in front of my eyes in recent time and very much said some embarrassing shit this brianna Wu person needs to be fucking scorched from the goddamn earth in a metaphorical sense and just not permitted to to to, to have any sort of conversational advantage because of her reputation that precedes her or anything. Fuck the Gamergate shit. I don't give a fuck if she was harassed. Like, from now on, persona non grata. She needs to be attacked until she... It's beyond repentance. She She's definitely the kind of slime that would try to talk her way around a former bad opinion. She just has that vibe. And so I think just scorch. Scorched from the online left uh scorched from from politics in general like her it should be to the point where her reputation precedes her and people know that it, it should be a fucking half hour conversation that she has to have similar to like what is happening to Vosh naturally by his own existence it should be one of those things before anyone can hear a single word out of her mouth that's like original to a new concept that she's trying to discuss because if this is how she approaches this there is no doubt in my mind she is as slimy if not slimier about other stuff all the zionist talking heads have unraveled at this point it's fucking crazy because like it, some of these people were treating it like a game and i understand the desire to do stuff like that i get why people get wrapped up i'm going to turn off the content warning now i, I get why people they get conflicted you know what i mean they're like i want to fucking fight i want to i want to battle it out um, you know, I, I have an opinion and I want to stick up for my opinion, but at some point, if you don't have an internal reservoir of shame that can be levied to get you to stop embarrassing yourself and the issue you're talking about before you cause damage to it, you need to be scorched out of whatever position that you're in to talk about it before you can do damage. This is my thing when it comes to talking, if we want to move on to a secondary figure, this is my shit when it comes to Vosh not putting his fucking life back in order and changing the behaviors, the habits, his own disposition when it comes to doing the embarrassing stuff that he does. He is delving into conversations that require a defter hand than he is permitting himself to. You guys can see how I code switch is kind of the term when I'm trying to talk about more intensive stuff. You can still be a human being. You can be flawed. You can have a you can have hobbies. You can have distasteful tastes even and and speak crudely and act crudely and be a bizarre little freaky weirdo, but you have to be able to also act with a modicum of tact and not be boorish when you're actually speaking on matters that are actively the most horrific things that are happening on the earth in a certain locale. This is beyond right, left messaging and conversations. It's, it's just literally a genocide. 
I, I'm to the point where I feel like the smug chuckling about like pedantic definitions and shit that I keep hearing about it is a little absurd. And I think it's also important from a callous sense. I'm not just as not even as a moral thing. I think it's absurd for people to believe that there's going to be a future in conversations like this when anyone who is running into the way that you discuss shit, when it's finally a con a conversation about something that matters to them, they see how that conversation feels when you have it and they don't have that distance of like, well, it's not happening to me. And it's like, Oh, this is actually disgusting. This is actually gross. I don't know why this person is so fucking like cocky and flamboyant and careless and, and callous to this, uh, to, to, to the suffering and like the violence that's going on or just, you know, the depredation, whatever and what have you. I think that it is going to be a thing that causes a long-term distance between um, online or just just political punditry by amateurs. I, I'll just say we're just amateur political pundits to some degree until you hit like a certain threshold of followers, um, or even just maybe low stakes triple A political punditry, which is very bad because as leftists you want more people to come in and and listen to you. Because we are and must be the true big tent party. We have to have a, a super majority to win what the other party only requires a majority to win. In America and in a lot of other places. Because the powers that be stacked even voting against us as workers, as, as individuals, as human beings. When they even had to like, you know, cry uncle four revolutions ago and give us the modicum of a vote. But I, I do think it is going to cause an issue in a big rip. I think there are a lot of people that are becoming politically disillusioned when the largest voices in the sphere are just constantly engaged in sex pestery <laughs> uh, and, and, and just dipshit inaccurate and unconcerned with the facts takes. Uh, the, I can feel the smugness of that Brianna Wu tweet through her words fact check <laughs> you know what i mean no no concern with the violence that's going on no real concern for the longevity of the idf and of the israeli people that they uh pretend to defend like unironically i want the idf to be more effective at what they're supposed to be doing which is defending israel and their military is either has no control over what it's doing or is so fucking sideways with misplanted officers and conscripts and just probably a general massive malaise of, I don't want to fucking be here. I wouldn't be surprised if the morale is just dog shit because you have to go to Gaza every day and look at screaming, dying, starving children. And that's like probably a rough way to spend a Saturday if I had to guess. Uh, and with no end in sight of it and knowing that it's a generational conflict that you are just a minor cog in, the morale there is probably pretty fucking bad. And forcing the kind of guys who would I would be, if I was fucking Israeli, I would probably be a guy fighting for the IDF because it's the kind of person I am. I'm a fucking scrapper. If I was fucking born in the Hamas territories, I would probably be a fucking Hamas scrapper. That's just the kind of piece of shit I am. I might... If they're actually like very obviously bad, then I'll be a fucking whatever fighting against whoever I think is the worst. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I was a part of those militaries in a different fucking under a different star. And I would not want to be fighting on either of their sides, really, because they're so fucking bad at it. It's like embarrassing. But I want people to not die in warfare. Like having like, dude, seriously, seeing one fucking body bag and I've seen a few filled up is like a crazy vibe, like talking to a dude. And then, like, by lunchtime, you're touching his helmet while, like, his best friends are crying around you is a psychotic experience. People shouldn't generally go through it. Whether or not they're in the military or not, it's fucking crazy. Like, it's a, re it's a vibe. It's a whole vibe. I'll just tell you that. And it shouldn't happen to people. And this shit is only going to make it worse. Brianna Wu is only going to fucking spread the kind of vitriol and soul sickness that causes shit like this to fucking escalate. And she's going to do it for her own self-serving means. She's a monster. Like, unironically. She's a fucking beast. She does she does sloth her weight steadily toward fucking... Uh, God damn it. I can't remember. 
to Bethlehem. Ugh. Like and like subscribe. And subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.